Welcome back my blueberries. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to manage your Java JDKs. Before I begin talking about how to actually manage your Java JDKs, I want to introduce you to the concept of language version management tools. And what these are is tools that we use during our development workflow that allow us to easily switch between versions of our programming language. Examples of when you would want to switch between your programming language versions is when maybe you're working on multiple projects and each one of those projects might use a different version of the programming language or you're debugging an environment issue or perhaps you're doing regression testing on your product or library and you want to see that it works across the expected versions of your programming language of choice. And this is why you would want to use a language version management tool because they allow you to switch between versions of your programming language easily and quickly. It's because of this need that I always make sure that I set up my local environment to use a language version management tool whenever I commit to learning a new programming language. For example, if I was learning JavaScript, I would use something like Node Version Manager so that I could quickly switch between different versions of Node. All languages have tools like this, and Clojure is no different. In the case of Clojure, I would say one of the bigger differences is the fact that you're going to need a tool like this to manage your JDKs, and you're also going to need something to manage your Clojure versions. But if you're not interested in learning Clojure, don't worry, because all we're going to be doing in this video is learning how to manage your Java JDKs using JEnv, which is a popular tool for this task. I'm also going to be providing timestamps in the description below so that you can jump to the sections that are more relevant for you. So without further ado, let's jump over to the computer and see how we can use JM to help us manage our JDK. What we're looking at right now is my terminal and I'm in my root directory and I'm not going to show you how to install or configure JM because I actually wrote a blog post that I believe communicates this process more effectively and I'll be able to maintain that blog post going forward making sure that it stays relevant. As a result, I'm going to put a link to that blog post in the description below so you can check that out on your own time. What I will do is show you what JM does, how it works, and how it might fit into your development workflow. I already have JM installed and configured and what makes JM a little bit different from other language version management tools like Node Version Manager is that JM doesn't actually install JDKs for you. All it does is manage them. But in order to manage them, you actually have to add your JDKs to JEnv. What I'm now going to do is show you how you can add a Java JDK to JEnv. And if you don't have any JDKs installed, I actually did a video that can show you how to install one. And there's a link to that above and a link in the description below. So go check that out when you have some time. Until then, the goal is to add your Java JDKs to JEnv. In order to add a JDK to your JEnv, you have to actually know where your JDK lives. So in order to do that, we can type in user slash lib and it'll be lib exec and then i believe it's java home yeah dash v so when we enter that we're going to see that it tells us where all of our java virtual machines live and you can see that i have an adopt open jdk 11 and adopt open jdk 13 and to the right of it are these paths and these paths are the things that we care about. So as we said, I have two JDKs installed. In order to add them to JEnv, I just want to copy, let's say, adopt open JDK 11, and I type JEnv add paste the path, and then just press enter. It's going to give me that output. Now, when I type in JEnv versions, we're going to see that I have these four items here. So that means that adopt open JDK 11 is now being managed by JEnv. Okay, so let's add one more and we will say, find me this again. We will take 13 and then we will say JEnv add and then enter. And now when we type in JEnv versions, we're going to see that 11 and 13 is being managed by JEnv now. So we'll clear that up. And the last step is to actually set one of the Java versions. So if we just typed in Java version right now, we're gonna see that we're on 13. And that's because by default of the two that I have installed, 13, which is the higher number of the versions, is going to be the one that's active across environments. But what if for some reason I wanted 11 to be my active version of JDK? To do that, what I have to do is figure out which versions I have and I'm going to switch to 11.0.6. So in order to do that, I type JEnv, and then we'll do global 11.0.6. We're gonna get nothing returned. In order for this to work, what we have to do is open a new terminal. 
wait for a second. And now we can type in Java dash version and we get 11.6. And to show you that it wasn't just this terminal, we'll open a new one as well. And again, type in Java dash version and it's still 11.6. And if I wanted to switch back to the other version, 13 of Adopt Open JDK, I could just do JNV global 13.0.2. Again, we are going to open a new terminal window. So that takes effect. And we'll check out which version of Java we're currently running. And perfect, we're back on 13.02. And global is not the only feature that JM provides. There's another cool one called local. And what that would allow you to do is actually set JM to remember your project and what version of the JDK it actually needs to use. So that when you switch between projects, you don't have to manually tell JM to switch the version of Java. There are many other cool features that JM actually provides, but those are the ones that I wanted to show you in this video and hopefully give you a sense of what it can do and an idea of whether or not it would work in your development workflow. So I want to thank you for watching. And if this video was helpful for you, please leave a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already.